Good day, this is Jim Bytel from Columbia Gorge Community College. This is Digital Electronics 1. This lecture is entitled De Morgan's Theorem. Okay, so De Morgan's Theorem was formalized by this guy, Augustus De Morgan, and it is an incredibly simple and powerful tool used potentially to simplify logical expressions. Okay, and it answers that burning question that you are all want to know why. Why is a NAND gate equivalent to a negative OR? If you don't understand what I'm talking about, please go back, review those NAND lectures, because this is pretty essential to understanding of De Morgan's theorem. And since time immemorable, this is basically the first example problems I'm going to do is the NAND equivalent to the negative OR and the NOR equivalent to the negative AND to demonstrate De Morgan's theorem. What De Morgan's theorem basically states is there's kind of two of them. Uh, the first one deals with the NAND is the complement of a product. You know, think about A and B. A is ANDed with B. Think from our multi-level logic circuit. A is ANDed with B, then it's inverted. So that's the complement of a product. It's equivalent to the sum of the complements. Okay, so what are the original variables A and B? I'm complementing them and I'm summing them together. That's, that's it in a nutshell right here. I'll write that out for you. And that is our visual description. And you're like, no duh, you already showed me that with your truth tables there and your multi-level circuit analysis. What does this gain for me? Well, the deal is, is think about how these things are written. A is ended with B, and then the whole negation bar is over it. You know, it's kind of closing itself off with the rest of the world. You can't perform any of those Boolean simplifications with something that's closing itself off with that big bar over the top of it. However, look at this expression right here. I'm complementing A, summing it, complementing B. Now I can get into there, I can get into A, I can get into B. Basically, I'm opening up, I'm removing those parentheses by using De Morgan's theorem. Okay, so that was the first De Morgan's theorem. Obviously, the second theorem is dealing with the NOR, and you've already figured this out from our previous lecture, that the NOR is equivalent to a negative AND. And again, what we're doing on a multi-level circuit approach is we are summing them together and complementing it. So those values A, B, A, B, I'm ORing, i.e. summing them together, and I'm complementing the sum. So complement of sum is equivalent to, you guessed it, the product of complements, which, let me redraw that from a multi-level circuit perspective. A, B, complementing them to not A, not B, and then I'm ending them together. And you're like, yeah, I already knew all that because you talked about that in the Norgate thing. But what have you gained? Look at how you write this thing. It's got a big old bar over it. It's kind of closing itself off. I can't form any of those Boolean simplifications what we've done previously using Boolean laws. I have to break it apart. Well, look at this. There you go. I just broke it apart. How does this thing work? I mean, it's so simple, yet it's so powerful. I mean, it's like a fire axe. It's so simple, it has no moving parts, but it's very effective when it's swung wildly around. And I'll show you what I mean. Now, I want you to time me when I do this example right here, because I'm about to save you hours and hours of reading and studying. Because so it's a very reputable textbook that spends 50 pages, and I am not joking, it spends 50 pages on the simple diagram that I'm just about to draw. And I'm gonna do it twice. I'm gonna show you from two different perspectives how this thing works from two different perspectives. And I guarantee you, I will get this example done in less than 50 pages. And it is essential to understanding some stuff later on. Okay, what if I took the following circuit right here? It's two NAND gates feeding a NAND gate with a single output. So far, so good. What's the multi-level logic circuit perspective of this? Well, here's an intermediary signal, which is A and B negated. Here's C and D negated. What's the output X look like? Well, it's its inputs. Let's call that M. Let's call that N. Here, let's do it from that perspective. It's M and N negated. What's M? Well, it's A and B negated. What's N? It's C and D negated but then the whole thing is negated. How can I use De Morgan's theorem to simplify this thing? And where you'll find it is an incredibly useful circuit. Nested NANDs form an SOP. There you go. I have just saved you 50 pages of study. Nested NANDs form the sum of products. 
okay, the SOP expression by De Morgan's theorem. Okay, so what is an int? Go back up to our first expression of De Morgan's theorem. The complement of a product, i.e. a NAND, is equivalent to the sum of the complements. What is coming in on this NAND's input? Here, let me get rid of the, all the arrows so you know what I'm talking about. These two inputs, obviously, M and N. What I could do is I could just say this. The complement of the product is equal to the sum of the complements. So what am I saying? I'm saying this, yeah. Still, some of you guys are waiting for this flash of lightning to occur right here. What does this look like when I go down a level? What that means is I'm negating. I'm oring the negation of M. What was M? M was A and B negated, but I'm negating it. Do you understand what's going on here? What's N? C N D negated. What's not N? Not N. It's not not C N D. What is a double negation via rule nine? A and B or C and D. That is an S O P expression. Time me. Think about that. I just saved you a lot of time right there. Using De Morgan's theorem, nested NANDs create the SOP expression. If you didn't even understand this, if you didn't understand what I just talked about, De Morgan's theorem, I'm going to do it a second way. Think about it from the multi level logic circuit analysis. What's a NAND gate? It's an AND with its output inverted. What's a negative OR? It's an OR with its input inverted. What's rule nine state? The negation of a negation is what you originally started with. Think about here there's A and B. There's not A and B. What'd you get out here? A and B. Why am I have those those two? Why do I even have those not gates in there? It does the same thing. Here's C and D. Here's not C and D. Here's C and D. Why do I even have those NAND gates, those not gates in there? Go ahead, get rid of them. C and D. What I'm showing you is the nested NAND gate for whatever is on those particular inputs has the same function as ANDs feeding in an OR exceptionally, exceptionally useful theorem because, as we'll see in a little bit here, pretty much every combinational logic expression can be simplified down into an SOP expression. How did I make use of it? Is by breaking apart using the Morgan theorem. I'm breaking the bar. Breaking the bar, change the operator, change the sign. So that is how typically people do it. It's kind of this three-step break the bar. I want to get rid of that big over bar. My, my uh, general uh, guidance for you guys is go for the biggest bar first. You can work internally if there are several different, you know, there, there are different ways to do this. I could break that one here. I'm not going to really gain anything if I do that. Go for the biggest bar first. So break the bar, change the sign, change the operators. But that's a general scheme of things. Let's go ahead and see if we can apply De Morgan's theorem. And I'm going to try just limiting it to De Morgan's theorem. Sometimes those Boolean rules that we used previously are going to sneak into this. I'm going to try to minimize those. I want to talk just about De Morgan's theorem for this particular lecture. We'll go on into a next section of this here where we do some examples, and we're going to throw in some of those Boolean laws, throw in some of those Boolean rules and De Morgan's theorem, and see if we can come up with some simplified expressions. So let's go ahead and try a couple examples of this. Okay, so we're actually going to, for the example for De Morgan's theorem, I want to do is actually a revisiting of something we've already done in multi level uh, circuit, logic circuit analysis. It's that idea of NANDs. Are they associative? Are they not associative? I know we did the multi level logic circuit analysis of this and we proved that they weren't. Can we do this in a far simpler, far faster manner using De Morgan's theorem? And what we've got here is we've got three separate circuits. I got the one here, let's call them X, Y, and Z. Are they equivalent? Look at Z from the perspective of Z. Z is A and B and C negated. I'm taking a product and then I'm complementing it. According to Morgan's theorem, what I can do is I can say that, and I know I'm doing three of them simultaneously. You can actually break them up separately, but let's just do them all at once. The complement of a product is the sum of the complements. So complement A, complement B, complement C, sum them together. What I'm saying is, is that is equivalent to a negative or. A, B, C. Yeah, big whoop. Yeah, you should know that. You should understand that. That should be easy. What I'm going to try to do is use De Morgan's theorem on X and Y. If at any time we come up with a circuit that has the same expression as Z, we know they're equivalent. What do we have here? We got A and B and a together with a complement over it. Let's call that M. What is X? X is M and C negated. 
Okay, so x is m and c, the whole thing negated. Put in m, a and b negated, and it would c, the whole thing negated. So now there's a problem. Can I do any of that logic simplification that I was doing earlier? No, because I got those big bars over everything. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the first De Mor statement of De Morgan's theorem. The complement of a product is equal to the sum of the complements. So it was ending c. So what I'm going to do is, is or not c. It was ending a and b negated. So I'm going to negate that. And according to our rule 9, double negation, a and b, or not c. Is that equivalent to that? Could I, okay, no, amigos, I don't think so. We don't even have to do that laborious truth table method anymore. Go ahead and see if y. Is y equivalent to either one of these things? Go ahead and try to do this yourself. Try to do this yourself with De Morgan's theorem. And again, I'm, I'm kind of throwing you an easy one here. It is the first statement of De Morgan's theorem. The complement of a product is equal to the sum of the complements. Go ahead and try this, and I'll go ahead and do this real slow. N is equal to B and C negated. What's Y? It's A and N negated. Just put in N. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to break the bar, change the sign, change the operator, change the sign. Double negation. I don't think that is the same as any one of these things. And look at all that time we saved just using De Morgan's theorem and not that truth table, that whole big long thing. All we did was just use De Morgan's theorem once for x, y, and z each. We came up with two totally different expressions, three totally different expressions. And if you want to go ahead and prove this to yourself, that these things match our previous multi-level circuit definitions here that we did for our truth tables, you can go ahead and put these things in. And some of the some of the steps I'm going to show you here, uh, there's kind of a prelude to our SOP expressions that we're going to do doing in Unit 5. X, its expression is A and B or not C. So anytime C is a zero, i.e. not C, we're going to have a one output. And anytime we're going to have A and B, high simultaneously. So that's what that one's truth table looks like. Same thing for y. Its output will be high anytime b and c are both high and anytime a is a zero. What does z's output look like? It's not a ord with not b ord with not c, either negative or equivalent. The output is high anytime any input is low, but it's also a NAND. So uh, what is that? The output is low when all inputs are high. That's what we came up with for our De Morgan's theorem derived expressions, which if you remember right from the beginning lectures of unit three, this is the exact same truth table we had earlier without all the, uh, the necessary work that we had to do. We just did a quick derivation using De Morgan's theorem. And what's neat about De Morgan's theorem too is, is a lot of people don't mention this, is they talk about it going from this direction to that direction, the complement of the product is equal to the sum of the complements. Basically saying, if I've got a NAND gate, I can always break it down. Well, what if I just wanted to, to put things together? What if I came up with this expression here, not A or not B, and I didn't have any uh, inverters or OR gates? Go backwards. Just grab a NAND gate. So it helps to know these things for, forward and backwards. Going backwards is a little, it takes a little bit of seeing. Okay, that is definitely a negative or perspective. I can go ahead and just grab a NAND gate off the, off the shelf. All right, so let's do a couple more examples. And again, I'm going to try to limit these things to just De Morgan's theorems for right now. And then we'll go into some some things where we use both Booleans, Boolean rules and laws and De Morgan's. Okay, so here's a pretty simple example here. Let's see if we can apply De Morgan's theorem to this one. And I'll give you a hint here. I'm not using the first definition of De Morgan's theorem using the second one. So what have I got here? I've got an AND gate that's getting A. What's the other input of the AND gate? It's a NOR of B and C. So what I'm doing is I'm taking B or C, negating the whole thing. So what is our final expression? Let's call it X. X is equal to A, ANDed with B or C, negated the whole thing. I want to get rid of that big old overbar there. I want a simpler, easier to understand expression. What am I going to do? I'm going to use De Morgan's theorem on just that section. So it helps to kind of compartmentalize where do I need to apply De Morgan's theorem? Just that one thing, just the thing under the big overbar. And again, be cautious with your pencil. Don't pull that thing over there because it's wrong. That's not the expression. What am I going to do? Well, A stays the same. 
the complement of a sum is equivalent to the product of the complements. There's the product, there's the complements of the original variable, all within parentheses. Due to the associative property of ands, I can say a and it with not b and it with not c. A potentially simpler understanding of that circuit, how that circuit behaves. I want to say a simpler understanding just to do this, do, I mean, try this. Try to come up with a truth table for that thing. Try to come up with it. And don't, uh, don't do it on paper. You got to do it in your head. Try to come up with a truth table for that one in your head. I'm going to pick that 100 times before I pick this other one because I understand, okay, anytime A is a 1, that's going to put a 1 there. Anytime B is a 0, it's going to put 1 there. Anytime C is a 0, it's going to put a 1 there, and my output is going to go high. It's an SOP expression. It's the sum of products. Well, there's only one product term, so sum of product expression. Okay. I certainly do not understand what this thing's talking about. Anytime A is high, at the same time, B or C negated is also a high. Do this one. It's easier. But you're going to come up with the same truth table regardless for these expressions. This one is easier to understand and potentially even easier to implement. We still have two different types of gates. You got a NOR gate and an AND gate. This one, you got an AND gate and two inverters. You still got two levels of gates. So you may not have saved complexity, but you at least have saved an understanding of how it works. Okay, let's try this one here for an example. I'm kind of running out of uh, wiggle room as far as example problems this because we are going to quickly get into some uh, Boolean uh, rules and simplification. It's going to creep even into this one here, but this is a great example for De Morgan's theorem. It's going to concentrate on De Morgan's theorem is where do I break it? Obviously, you got a big overbar. I want to get rid of that big overbar and make this thing play with some of the rest of the circuit here. I've got to somehow get inside that overbar to do some of the simplifications that I would potentially want to do. And if you could think about this is where do I break this thing? Think about this. Here is a term which is being ORed with this term. You may mistakenly think of it this way as this term being ANDed with this term. It's not that way. I mean, think about just from a numerical perspective. perspective. Let me draw this out here. 2 times 3 plus 4. This thing happens first. The ANDs happen first. So you, it's critical to your understanding is the order of operations of things. So where am I going to break this thing? It's right there. Break the bar, change the operator, complement the variables. So it was an E, so now it's a not E. What was it being anded with? It's going to be ORed with er, earlier. This whole term in yellow. So write that whole term in yellow. But I've got to complement it because, again, it's the complement of a sum is equal to the product of the complements. Have I gotten anywhere with this thing? Now I've got two separate terms now, but look at this. i got another big overbar here. How do I get rid of that thing? There's a couple ways. Let's try this one. There's an there's an and between here. What I'm anding together is this green term and that pink term. I can break the bar right there. How does that look? So change the operator. What was it anding together earlier? These guys. Negate them. Am I right here? Am I doing this correctly? Does that make my error a little bit more easily identifiable? What I'm saying is, is that and not E should be anding everything inside there. Use those parentheses to keep track of these things. I got some more over bars. Maybe I want these guys to come out and play. Let's do the De Morgan's theorem on this guy. So it was anding not A and B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to or not not A and not B. Do the De Morgan's theorem on this guy. So it was oring C and not D. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to and not C and not not D. Parentheses, whole thing, and it with not E. Double negations, get rid of them. If you rule none, I trust you at this point. You can track with this. The whole thing ended with not E. I can just as easily go ahead and if I really want an SOP expression, what I can do is now distribute A, excuse me, not E within there. A ended with not E or not B ended with I'm having some pen issues, sorry. Not E or not C ended with D ended with not E. So my final expression should be A ended with not E or not B ended with not E 
or not C anded with D anded with not E, which to me is an easier to understand expression than what we originally had here with all those overbars and negating those operators within there, those results within that. Now I understand this expression is high whenever A is a one and E is a zero because this term right here a not E will give me a result of one. And regardless of what the rest of this thing is, my output will be one because according to one of our Boolean laws, one or whatever is always a one. Okay, so this is an easier to understand SOP version compared to our previous one. And again, all we were trying to do is use De Morgan's theorem throughout this. So there's something here too, and I it's actually worth revisiting. You may have been tempted earlier to go ahead and view this big overbar here and view things within it as being capable of simplified. What I'm saying is, is why not distribute that not A and B into C or not D? Will I get a different result? The answer is, is no. Regardless of your order of doing these things, you're going to come up with the same expression. You may make more work for yourself. You may make less work for yourself. So let's kind of make this our turning off point and let's see if we come up with the same answer. What we're doing is we're starting with the expression big ol' overbar, not A and B, being anded with C or not D. Oops, I extended that too far. The overbar is right there. Anded with not E. Don't do De Morgan's theorem first this time. Different method. Let's try this. Not A and B. We're going to distribute that into those parentheses. C or not A, B, not D with that big ol' overbar. Anded with not E. Now I can break up using De Morgan's theorem. Again, how do I do that? I'm going to, I was previously oring not A and B and C and not A, B and not D. So I was oring them. Why not and them together and negate that and negate that? What am I going to do now? De Morgan's theorem, De Morgan's theorem. Do you see what I'm getting at here? You're, you're getting a triple foil. I can remember the foil, but I'm going to have to go visit the uh, internet to go see how a triple foil is done. But before I do that, you guys find my error there? I forgot to not see over that one. And there you go. That's the multiplication of two trinomials. This whole thing right here, basically I'm multiplying this trinomial times that trinomial. And that whole thing in the parentheses is multiplied times not e. Okay, guys, I'm not going to give you something this. If, if we're getting into multiplying trinomials, you're going down the wrong path. I'm not going to ask you to do something like this. So if you get in a quiz or something like that or a test, yeah, I'm not asking you to this detail. However, we have set this thing up. Do you recognize potentially some Boolean rules that we could potentially, maybe that guy, maybe that guy, maybe there's some like terms there. What you're going to get, you're probably going to end up getting that guy right there. So there's right ways and wrong ways to do this. We may, just for just for the heck of it, we may have to revisit that one because, you know, once there's a challenge like this, you can't put that down. Well, we're not going to do it right now, but we'll maybe visit later. What this lecture was about was just, again, as a precursor to De Morgan's theorem. All it really is, it's a statement equating, if you could think about, the NAND and the negative OR and the NOR and the negative AND. And the most powerful application of that is this thing right here, okay, the SOP. It's nested NANDs. They're equivalent to the SOP. Let's go ahead and see if we can apply this and everything else that we've learned to go ahead and do some logic simplification in the next lecture.